identified in our next speaker, and it is my distinct honor to introduce him. Please welcome a true friend of the Smithsonian for decades, the man for whom this lecture series is named, an astronaut, a senator, a Marine, a pioneer, and above all, a great American patriot, Senator John Glenn. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Clough, uh, very much. Thank you. The summer of 1969 was a defining time in America because of the milestone that we're recognizing tonight, Apollo 11. You can ask anyone over the age of 50 what she or he or she was doing when we landed on the moon, and they can tell you, and that's me too. I was fortunate to be, I had left NASA by that time, but I had uh, was back in the observation area in the control center and watched the whole thing unfold there and something I certainly will uh, never ever forget along with uh, you and people all over the world. In 61, President Kennedy had made a public commitment to land on the moon by the end of the decade. This was not just some idle objective. I think a lot of people forget what the drive was back at that time. Um, a lot of the drive behind our efforts at that time uh, was the Cold War. This wasn't just some scientific uh, stunt or, or uh, effort to uh, exceed just for the, the, just for the doing of it. It was inspired by the Cold War and the competition we had, the Soviet claims of research superiority to us. They were taking thousands of students to the Soviet Union, training them, sending them back to their own countries. And they had been ahead of us a while in the earlier days of that, of the space program when they were actually launching and successfully while some of ours were blowing up on the mission, or uh, boosters were blowing up on the launch pad. But the years rolled by after the president made that decision to go and announced it, and uh, the 60s drew toward a close. In 1968, we have to remember some of the things that happened at that time. We had great turmoil over the, the Vietnam War, and we had had uh, uh, actual riots in uh, Chicago over this. Uh, we had the assassination of uh, Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. And uh, at the time, America stood at sort of a critical crossroads. And I think, you know, that, that Apollo 11 did a lot to bring this country back together again. Uh, people suddenly had a feeling that we were all one again and that we could go ahead and move ahead like we hadn't felt uh, for a long time. And I thought it was interesting a few days ago, there was an article in the New York Times, I think it was the Wolford article about the, the anniversary, when he talked about people, uh, Americans around the world where foreigners were coming up to them in different capitals around the world and saying, we did it, we did it, we did it. And congratulating Americans, but it was, we did it. And they were talking about themselves along with us, the way they viewed this whole thing. And showed that I think for the first time maybe in human history, we had the people of the whole world with a sense of, it was a major time for all mankind, that this was a step that nobody had ever done before. And it was something that meant a lot to people all over the world. Now it's too bad of course we can't keep that same kind of, of dedication because everyone shared in the success of this historic mission is too bad we just can't continue that attitude day in and day out. People often wonder if younger generations who have no memory of the moon landings recognize the importance of these events. And perhaps there is a re resurgence now of interest in public service as there was uh, back after those days of Apollo 11. The 40th anniversary reminds us of how the work of many people and the lives of many people went into sending these people to the moon on that day. Uh, Neil many times has mentioned about this, about what a team effort it was, a giant team hundreds of thousands of people involved with this uh, all over the country. And it was indeed that. And remembering the Apollo program as a tribute to what Americans can do, an example of what yet can be done. 